Hi, it's The Wire. It's Thursday, April 29th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I'm going to throw a red flag here on the WBA. You know, boxing is only as good as its credibility. Right? When you watch a title fight, I believe you need to believe that both guys have earned the shot. That there's no favoritism. That the reason the fight is happening is because both of these guys have done a lot of things that warrant a chance at a world title. Now, I understand there's a narrow exception for this. It's straight out of the Rocky movie. An existing champion, someone who's dominant, like the fictional Apollo Creed, decides, all right, I'm going to fight a local guy who has generated some buzz for box office purposes, right? Okay, I'll accept that. But understand, the established champion has to be an established champion. Well, you don't have that right now at 160 pounds for the WBA's World Championship. Raúl Morata is the super champion. That tells you part of the problem right there. They've watered down the championship. Right? It might surprise some people that some guy named Trevor Bryant, who I'm guessing his next-door neighbors would have a hard time recognizing, is a WBA heavyweight champion. Think about that. By the way, he got there by beating Bermain Stavern, who was on a losing streak at the time of the fight. Well, here at middleweight, we're supposed to believe that the WBA's regular world championship is vacant. And so, of course, they've picked two guys. That's what they've done. They've picked two guys to fight for their title. Now, I'll buy Arislandi Lara, right? Arislandi Lara decorated career at 154. He's fought some guys at 154. He's a real champion at 154, right? Not 160. Well, this is his debut fight at 160. And of course, it's for the title. So I stopped and I thought, okay, well, who's he fighting? He must be fighting someone in the top 30. Is that too much to ask? Somebody tell me here if I'm being un unreasonable here. Nobody has the belt. The WBA has picked two guys to fight for their title. Is it too much to ask that the two guys they pick be in the top 30 of box racks ratings for the division? I'm not talking top 30 pound for pound in the sport. I'm talking about top 30 for the middleweight division. What I want people to also realize, too, is the magnitude of the middleweight division. You go through history, and you're going to see some of the biggest names in the sports history were middleweights, right? Became champions at middleweight. So if you're going to have a major sanctioning body belt in the division of Carlos Monzon, in the division of Stanley Ketchell, in the division of Marvelous Marvin Hagler, in the division of Bernard Hopkins, in my opinion, you have to earn it. I don't want to show up for a WBA middleweight championship fight 
and be wondering how one of the guys got the shot, especially when there's no champion. Well, that's the situation with Eris Landy Lara's fight against Thomas Lamana. Folks, Thomas Lamana is not in the top 30 in the division on box rack. He's not. Understand the last two guys Lamana fought had at least 14 losses. It's not like this guy won an elimination fight. This guy didn't earn the shot by being part of some tournament where he pulled an upset. No. He's lost two of his last four fights. Now don't get me wrong, I've looked on film. I have some highlights from a couple of his fights in my favorites folder here. He's a decent fighter. But wow, if the WBA was going to pick two guys to fight for their title, you mean to tell me that Chris Eubank Jr. wasn't available? Rob Brandt wasn't available? You know, I know Liam Williams just fought, but I'd rather him here than Thomas Lamana, whose nickname is Cornflake. Right? Felix Cash. Sam Edgington. Um, hell, I'd go for Kanat Islam, who's only... Well, put it this way. I'll just say that there are so many guys at middleweight. Islam, who I just mentioned, is 28-0. and 0, Right? Who are more deserving of this shot than Thomas Lamana. This fight to me reeks, reeks of political connections, of people being allowed to cut in at the front of the line. Let me say this too, if you go to your casino and you say, hey, what are the odds on Lara, 38 year old Lara, in his first fight at middleweight, the person behind the counter is going to tell you, oh, he's a 33 to 1 favorite. In other words, the casinos who make odds for a living are telling you that if these guys fought 34 times, Lara, 38, who's never fought at middleweight, would win 33 of the 34. It's even worse than that. I looked up Lamana's record and I see he only has something like 12 career KOs. In other words, he's fighting a slick southpaw. Lara's calling card is slickness. He's an excellent boxer. He's the guy who hits you, makes you miss. Lateral movement. Hard to find in the ring. Defensively blessed. Right? That's who he is. And he's fighting a guy who doesn't have the punch to knock him out. In other words, this isn't the fight where it's a slick guy against a guy with a big punch who, if he lands once, might be able to lift the title. Folks, you don't even have that opportunity here. Lamana is going to have to land and land and land and land. I just don't see it happening. I think Lara is going to win the fight. I think this fight is an embarrassment for boxing. I think the people at the WBA need to be taken out back and lectured about the value of integrity in the sport. This fight is televised, folks, so only in boxing, a sport with a lot of great fighters, a sport that could put on major fights, only in boxing do you get a situation like this where they decide to televise a non-major fight and they aren't even trying to look credible. They're saying, look, we know Lara has never fought at middleweight. He's in our title fight. 
he doesn't have to fight an eliminator. The other guy, well, he's not in the top 30. At least not on box rack. No, he hasn't just beaten Chris Eubank Jr. or Derevianchenko or Michael Zarafa. No, he got this fight by beating guys with 14 losses and more than 20 losses. Right? Only in boxing do they decide to televise that fight. So as a fan who loves the sport, let me just say, I expect Laura to win big. The play I like, although it might not hit because I expect Laura to run a lot, but the play I like is the under nine and a half rounds simply because Laura's 38 years old. Right? Also, I get the feeling Lamana is in over his head. He's never fought anybody anywhere as good as Laura. Right? So, these are the kind of fights where something can happen. An outclassed fighter might be outclassed to the point where the referee has had enough. Right? Remember, one of these guys is going off at longer than 33 to 1 odds. Right? So, red flag from me, um, you know, I'm disappointed. Boxing needs to look itself in the mirror. How could you take a historical division? One where, well, put it this way. How could you take a division where at one point Sugar Ray Robinson was the champion? Announce that you're having a fight for your belt. Be a major sanctioning body. And have a guy who's not ranked in the top 30, according to Box Rec, in the division. Compete for the title. I'm astonished. As I like to say, if I saw this in a movie, I'd say, come on. It couldn't be that bad. This is unrealistic. Well, folks, unfortunately, this nightmare is happening in real life. I like Laura over Lamana. I'm not going to bet on anyone at 31, uh, 33 to 1 odds. So I'm going to take the under 9.5 rounds. Right? If Laura can't get this guy, who's been stopped twice, out of there, by the midway point of the 10th round, then I'm going to doubt his legitimacy as a viable middleweight champion. Again, he's 38 years old. And you have a lot of lions out there who would love a title shot. Right? I just I just don't know how a guy who can't take out cornflake by the midway point of the 10th round could be taken seriously in this division. That's how I see it. I'm taking the under. Let me also say that I'm protesting this fight, but of course not enough not to bet on it. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.